elections. Peter Garrett tells us this is his only one-on-one -on -one interview. Peter Garrett, congratulations. Thanks very much, Ray. Do you feel like a blow-in in this seat? Uh, not to the extent that I've spent a lot of time in my working life, Ray, in the oils and doing my conservation work going right around Australia. And I've played in that seat, I've swum in that ocean, uh, and the people that are there are Australians that I've connected with in other places, so no, not really. Would you agree with the Prime Minister that you can't be very passionate about Australia if you don't vote? Not at all, and look, the PM's got it a bit wrong. I have voted. Uh, I've voted... Every, every time? Just about every time, every time I can remember, and certainly when I've been in the country, and even when I was out of the country last time with yours in 2001, I voted. You know that if, if you can't prove if you voted, the locals could well call you a hollow log in this, that you've just sort of blown in. Well, I've got good proof for the voting sides of it, Ray, because okay. we've got people calling in all around Australia who've seen me at the, at the polling booths. I've got Midnight Oil who voted with me at the Australian Consul in New York. Uh, I've got my mates down on the south coast who were there when we voted a couple of elections back. So, okay. look, there's no question about it. I definitely did vote. But, look, I also take some responsibility for not checking to see whether or not I was still on the roll. And Aussies, it's a wake-up call for me. It's come at a good time, actually, and I think it's a wake-up call for all of us. See whether you are actually on or not. Would you welcome US nuclear ships into Australian waters? Look, I probably wouldn't welcome them in, not, not nuclear armed, but I'd accept that that's a part of Labor's policy and if I had strong views about it, I'd go into the caucus, I'd go into the party room and I'd express those views in the party. I mean, I recognise what I'm doing. I'm moving from the outside where I was a really strong, quite outspoken person to the mainstream. I think the mainstream's come to me a little bit too over the years, Ray, I've got to say, but as I do that, I've got to moderate my views if I'm going to be effective. I'm not going to compromise them, though. People will still know how I feel, they'll know how I feel in the party, but I recognise that I've got to be a team player in Labor, and that's the decision I've made, and it's one I'm very comfortable with. So you haven't sold out? I don't believe so. But, Peter, have you done a backflip on Pine, on, on Pine Gap base? I don't think so. I think it's really a recognition that the whole strategic environment has changed, Ray. I mean, I'm still as concerned about nuclear weapons as I ever was, and I'll raise those issues really strongly. But you wanted that base out. Well, now you yes. with it? Well, you know, in the age of terrorism, I think it's playing, at the moment, a really important function in terms of eavesdropping and checking out what terrorists are doing. The whole situation has changed since the 80s when I was a very strong anti-nuclear campaign. I think those issues are still valid, but terrorism obviously changes the complexion a lot, and there's a strong argument for the bases doing that anti-terrorism role, and it's part of Labor policy and when I'm in the Labor Party I'll accept it. Will you fight the unions who support uh, logging in old growth forests? No, but I'll attempt to persuade my colleagues that there are solutions in the forests in Tasmania which can protect both jobs and the trees. I think that you can have sustainable forest policy. Uh, I mean I look at the policies of the Liberal government on issues and I understand why I'm joining Labor. I mean, you know, Labor at least is talking about climate change and global warming. Here we are sitting in Sydney in winter, it's as hot as hell out there, uh, you know, second degree water restrictions, the country's in drought, we're not talking about what we're doing in terms of global warming, we're not talking in terms of what we should be doing with Kyoto, we're not talking in terms of what we should be doing and actually marrying up the business of making the economy and the environment go together. That's the real challenge for modern governments in the 21st century and I think Labor's in a really good position to do that. Will you support ethanol, for example, Peter, to try and clean up the air? Well, you know, Ray, ethanol is sort of one of those questions that I could sort of try and make up an answer on the run, but I honestly have to think about it. I haven't really got myself right across it all right at this moment. How about saying sorry and reconciliation? I think that's important. The government know. should say it? A Labor government should say it? I believe so, yeah. I think there's a place for a proper apology in the reconciliation process. I don't think there's any doubt. So tonight, what comes first for Peter Garrett? The passion or the power? Uh, it's always going to be the passion, Ray. There's no question about that, because when you and I take our suits off and go home, we've got to be passionate as well. All right. Wish you well. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Peter.